Okay, I, uh, I thought to share an idea um, that um, my father taught me. I'm still, I'm still, I mean, my father, it's my father's idea, so he could say it over much better than me. But um, it's something, uh, an approach that my father has uh, 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 to Shavuot from the Chumash. Uh, I wanted to share um, uh, an idea from that. I'm going to do my best, as best as I understand it. Um, it's really an idea that could be fleshed out and you know, so many beautiful details. But um, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to do a brief uh, general. Okay. So um, we are used to celebrating Shavuot as the day of Matan Torah. And, and in practice, our, um, a, um, we celebrate that and commemorate that specifically through activities that focus on the giving of the Torah, Ma'amad Har Sinai, activities of learning the Torah, engaging the Torah, and it's all very nice and sweet. However, it is not borne uh, out at all from a reading of the Chumash and how the Torah talks about Shavuot. It's fascinating, meaning our whole sense in contemporary times and our celebration of Mount Torah, we take for granted, I'm sorry, of Shavuot, we take for granted this aspect of Mount Torah, and yet mysteriously, if you look in the Chumash, it doesn't talk about it at all. And you can ask many questions, uh, you know, like even on the appropriateness of what we take for granted, uh, meaning staying up and learning Torah is great, but you know, what happened on Shavu on, on Mount Torah by, by the first Luchos, um, that had nothing to do at all with our need or necessity to learn Torah or the process that we engage in to learn Torah. In fact, um, it, rightfully so, they point out that Yom Kippur was the day that we got the Luchot Shniot, which demanded our connection to God through the Luchot Shniot is what demands of us to struggle and toil with understanding God's word through an engagement in Torah. But if we would have retained our connection to Torah through the connection of the Luchot Rishonot, right? There would be no need to study Torah. We would all have a perfect understanding of the Ratzon Hashem in our being. So the fact that we stay off on Shavuot and we learn Torah, it's very nice. And of course, that's the tools that we have today to engage in Torah and to celebrate Torah. But, you know, even that. But, but the truth is, the point is that, um, okay, so the Torah basically talks about, um, uh, the, the, it describes uh, the holidays in, in various places, different aspects. And you have to basically know, for example, um, the Torah talks about the Shalosh Regalim, Pesach Shavuos and Sukkot in Kitisa, in Kisisa. It mentions the Moadim, meaning the five biblical holidays in Emor, also in Pinchas when it talks about the Karbanot. And so, uh, uh, for example, Shavuot as a function of the Shalosh Regalim is mentioned in Kisisa. Mm -hmm. In Emor, you have a description of it in the context of um, the year cycle, so it talks about Pesach, and then it talks about Sfira to Omer, the Mincha of the Omer, and then the Sfira, and then it says at the 50th, 50th day, you make, a, you, you make a holiday, and in the context of that, it mentions certain uh, um, mitzvahs, which overtly have nothing to do with Shavuot, like leaving the corners of your field mm -hmm. for the Ani, etc. Mm -hmm. And then, it also mentions that it's Chaga Bikurim, that it's, uh, somehow it's linked to Bikurim, and the mitzvah of Bikurim is discussed in its splendor and glory in um, ki tavo in Dvar. Mm. So in order to have a sense of Shavuot, just a different dinam, you'd have to look at them, all the different pieces, and each one is contextualized differently and, and, and raises different aspects. It's fascinating. Nowhere in the Torah does it give a date for Shavuot. Mm. <laughs> it says it's a function of the counting. Okay? Nowhere in the Torah does it mention a day, the day of Matan Torah. It never gives a date for Matan Torah. In fact, there's, a, there's kind of like a controversy almost in the Gemara, if indeed it happened on the 6th of mm -hmm. Sivan or 7th. Mm -hmm. We don't, that's very fascinating. The Torah never links Shavuot to a celebration of Matan Torah. Mm. Let's see, um, I, I hope we have time. I just wanna just point out briefly um, some points from some of the places. Okay, in Kisisa, very mysterious, it says, you should work for six days. On the seventh day, you should rest. In the plowing and in the reaping, in the seasons of the plowing and the harvesting, you should rest. You should make for yourself a holiday of weeks. Right? By, it's the 
time when you bring the first offering, the Bikurim, of the wheat harvest, Kitsir Chitin, the harvest of the wheat, the Chag HaSif, to Kufat HaShana, and then it mentions uh, Sukkot, which is the holiday of the, of the harvesting at the end of the year. That's all it has to say about Shavuot, and it calls it Shavuot over here um, without mention of the Omer. When it talks about the Omer and it says you have to count days and weeks in Parshat Emar, it says like this. Okay. Um, yeah. from you should count for yourselves after the first day of 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 the Chag of Pesach from the time that you bring the the Omer. Sheva Shavos Timimos Tiyana, you should count seven complete weeks. Ad Mimachos Hashavos Hashviyas, Tisbur Chamishim Yom, the Yikraft of Mincha Chadash of Abinai, Mimoshvo Sechem, Tavio Lechem Tenufa, and it talks about the Shteh Halechem, all the special carbonot you bring, the Sir Izim, and then Ukratem Betem Hayom Azem Mikra Kodesh, you should make a holiday, Yelechem Komelech Tavado, Lot Tasu, you shouldn't Melacha, Hukat Olam Bahomashot Techem, the Dorotechem, Uvekutrechem, Ekitir Arzachem, and when you harvest, the harvest of your land. You shouldn't um, uh, destroy the corners of your field. To the um, the poor and the stranger, you should leave them. I am God. That's what it says about Shavuot. Okay. So um, a, a, another point. So it's fascinating that it mentions it as and the name it gives us Shavuot is not where it talks about counting the Omer, and yet when it count, talks about a function of counting, it doesn't call it Shavuot. So the name Shavuot from the Torah doesn't have to do, seemingly, with a function of the counting. Okay, now, there is no avoda, special mitzvah to do on Shavuot, like you have on every other holiday, aside from the stuff in the, the, the service that's done in the Beis HaMikdash. Meaning, on Rosh Hashanah you blow a shofar, on Sukkot you, you shake your, your Arba Minim, you know, Pesach, you got to eat matzah and mar, can't have chametz. There's nothing special that you have to do in terms of a one-time mitzvah that's latent to Shavuot. You have to keep melacha, there are karbonot you bring, but other than that, there is nothing that you do. So it makes sense that contemporarily, you know, we have all these wonderful practices to make Shavuot meaningful. But as far as the Torah is concerned, it calls it a Chag Shavuos, and that's independent of the sphere. And the discussion of kitsir and uh, characterizing it as being something that's intimately tied to the, um, the, the agricultural process and uh, living with the land and, um, and uh, the, the kitsir, the reaping, etc., that seems to be the focus of the, um, the chumish and bikuru. Okay, so here's the punchline. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm sorry, I wish I could work it out with you in all its beautiful details. Maybe we'll have a chance another time. But um, the punchline is like this, that the Torah, well, Shavuot is a celebration of the week, the work week. Weeks, meaning it says, like it says in, in Kisisa, you should work for seven days, uh, you should work for six days, on the seventh day you rest, mm -hmm. okay? There is, okay, so the idea is that essentially we're celebrating the fact that that there is a, you know, the, the, the agricultural relationship or the, the relationship between man and his field and Amisral and the Eretz and the Bikurim is the metaphor for an interactive relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that there's investment and reaping, and the Bikurim is a function of you're coming and you're recognizing that God was your partner the whole time, he was with you the whole time, and you're offering his. So, you know, Rashi brings the Medrash in the beginning of Bereshit, it says, Bereshit, for the sake of Reshit, why was it creation? Bishvil Bikurim, Shenikru Reshit. Mm. For the mitzvah of Bikurim, somehow Bikurim is seen as Reshit, the ultimate mitzvah, why? Mm. So in this, so far, if you look in uh, Kisava, um, where it talks about the amazing mitzvah of Bikurim, so, you know, Rashi brings the Midrashim, that, that uh, there's a bat call that comes out and says, Yashar Koach, you should be Zochet to do it next year. You know, there's a beautiful, I'm just gonna, this, just to bring it home. There's a there's a pasuk here, okay. 
after the mitzvah Bikurim, where it talks about what you do and the declaration that the farmer makes, it says, Hayom hazeh, on this day, Adonai Elohecha mitzavcha la'asos et achukim ha'ela, that God, uh, Yudke Vavke, your God, commands you to do these statutes, ve'esa mishpatim, and these uh, laws, ve'shamarta ve'asisa osam, and you should uh, keep them and do them, b'chol levavcha v'chol nafshecha, with all your heart and all your soul. And Rashi says, Hayom hazeh, this day, what day is this? What are we talking about? This is the Pasuk after Bikurim. So he says like this. Bechol yom yihiyu be'inecha chadashim. Every day, God's mitzvahs, his Torah should be new to you. Ki ilu bo bayom nitztavet alem. Like that particular day you got Matan Torah. Meaning, almost as if to answer why there's no date ever. Chazal says there's no date given to the Torah because Torah is given all the time. There's no special day to celebrate Torah. If there's a day to celebrate Torah, it's not the day the Torah was given, but rather how your life in Olam Hazah as a creature of God's creation is uplifted because God gave the Torah. Then through God giving the Torah, we are able on a regular work week in our engagement with the field, that that is a, the field that we engage in an interactive personal relationship with God, that we ultimately partner with Him. And then through bringing Bikurim, right, we're recognizing that God was with us in the process all the time in the development of Olam Hazah. Meaning Shavuot, I mean, is, is there an idea starting to emerge here of the, from the Torah's perspective what Shavuot is all about, right? It's the recognition that there's the holiness, the sanctity of an interactive relationship with God within the engagement of the mundane. One could say, thank you, Hashem, that in God giving the world the Torah, or Amisol the Torah for us, uh, being given the Torah, it empowers us to engage even in the mundane, in Olam Hazeh, mm -hmm. but intrinsically in a connection with Hashem, mm -hmm. okay? And when Rashi says here, he's talking about Bikurim, and all of a sudden he's saying the, the, the relevance of Bayom Hazeh is insofar as that it's referring to the mitzvot and, and Matan Torah. And yet, why is it appropriate here? Why, why are we mentioning it uh, in regards to Bikurim? Oh, one second. He says, okay, so um, I'll, I'll say it like this. The, he brings, Rashi brings a midrash that says, uh, like I mentioned, that the bat kol comes out and says, Yashikach, that you did this mitzvah, you should be zochah to do it again next year. So my father asked like this, the medrash in Bereshit that Rashi brought down says, this is the highest mitzvah. Mm -hmm. Let's say you did the highest mitzvah, but God says that the whole point of creation was for this mitzvah. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you top that? What do you do for an encore? So the best the Batkol can do is, well, we hope you do it again next year. You're, you're done, right? Mm -hmm. The idea is, bechol yom yu the, the idea is that the, Pasuk, the end of the Pasuk says that you should do them that what changes a mitzvah, the quality of a mitzvah, the Bikurim that you brought last year was the ultimate mitzvah and it was your ultimate mitzvah based on who you were, the Cholavavcha, the Cholnafshacha last year. But every year, as you grow and as your awareness of Hashem grows and as you develop, the next year, right, it should be, it, you should top that as long as it exists within the, the, the locus, the field that you're working is the Cholavavcha, the Cholnafshacha. Okay? That, that's, that's what, that's, I, I, I'm going to stop here. Okay, but but basically the idea is that we're celebrating the fact that we're that we've been uh, we're engaged in an interactive with relationship with Hakadosh Baruch Hu in our daily lives, in our struggles, in our investment in Olam Hazeh to develop it in the field, and we recognize when we achieve it that Hashem was a partner with us the whole time, and that is if it coincides with the commemoration of Matan Torah, right? It's fitting because the Torah is what allows for that. Mm. Okay, so you know before well, Am Yisrael has been in Golis for two thousand years. And uh, when did we get to engage before regularly in, in that uh, physical practice of being engaged in the agricultural cycle, the holiness of Kedusha Vareti Yisrael? You know, so it's really amazing. Pretty soon, all these uh, sensibilities that are, that are in the Torah, we're going to actually, you know, you know, we grew up, we're still trying to connect everything, you know, to, to its root. And we have these practices in lieu of the Beis HaMikdash and in lieu of the agricultural stuff. So we have a Shavuos that looks the way it is now. You know, the mitzvah of Shavuos is cheesecake and to stay up all night. But, but maybe we can uh, renew this, uh, this deeper, uh, um, uh, yeah. It's anyway, we should all be Zoha to uh, live that life and, and, uh, and feel, uh, feel that our lives really revolve around that and, and experience that.